Hello, this is LBP Horror 101 with your host, The Unknown One, and today we'll be going over a very important part of all horror levels, the do's and don'ts horror cliches. Let me start off by saying horror cliches can be both good and bad. There's a reason why people overuse the same tricks in the book. It can be A, they were too lazy to come up with something on their own and decided to create an unoriginal level called Jim the Killer, because that's totally not copying a certain creepypasta. B, they made up their own story and it turns out okay, but the setting and plot or ending all felt typical and the story was predictable due to the cliches. Or C, they are aware of the fact that they are using a cliche and decide to work it into a unique story by throwing in new ideas and twisting the expectations. Obviously you want your level to be like option C, but most of us will fall under option B if we don't work hard enough on the horror elements of our story. And unless you decide to craft some kind of parody level, option A just tells me that you're a copier who contributes to the ever-growing list of copied levels on Little Big Planet. But then again, I have no right to tell you how to make a horror level. I'm only here to provide you with insight and advice in LBP's world of horror. And I'll be the first to tell you I myself am far from perfect, and I have used my fair shares of cliches in my levels. With that said, let us count down the list of cliches, starting with... Obstacle Monster. Sadly, this is used in probably 90% of survival horror games across the internet. It's when the threat or enemy becomes a block in the game that you'll die 50 times trying to get past just to finish the game. This is totally annoying and frustrates players. Two things you do not want your level to do. The solution? Nobody's really afraid to die. It's the way in which they will die that frightens us. Instead of killing off the player when the killer catches up in a chase, you need to incorporate a more creative punishment. This is your perfect opportunity to create an alternate ending. But death shouldn't be the main punishment. Death means death, people. Jump Scare Factory Please, for the love of God, do not lace your level with 5 million jump scares. The first one, when done properly, might terrify the player. The second will probably be a fraction of the scary the first one was. And any more jump scares will not phase a player at all. The solution anticipation before delivering a jump scare yes a loud ass exorcist scream is going to make my head hit the ceiling we are human loud noises startle us but if the player is more afraid of the jump scare itself than what's causing the jump scare then you're doing it wrong one per level is good enough you can play the odds and make it random but this only works best with point and click horror the number six. We all know what the number 666 means, right? Yeah, please do not use this. This isn't scary anymore. Solution? Unless you're actually making an antichrist level, which I recommend you do not do for the sake of offending someone's religious beliefs, this just tells me you're slapping it on there for no reason at all. Oh, it looked good. Like, it'd be scary if 666 were added to the end of it. No. Same with pentagrams and dot .exe. If you don't know what they actually mean, why would you throw it in your, to your level? Blood, blood, and more blood. The average human body contains a little over a gallon of blood in the body. That being said, I shouldn't see blood smeared all over the walls and ceilings within every single room I walk into when I play your level. Let's be logical, please. Solution? When you're going to use a lot of blood, you better make damn sure it's relevant to the story. Because a lot of great horror levels and stories have never had to resort to containing blood or gore. Same goes with the bloody writing or symbols on the wall. The less blood you use, the scarier the level seems to be. And just a little side story, when I was probably like 7 or 8 years old, I would live off of the game The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. It was one of the greatest adventures of my childhood until I got to this one dungeon called The Bottom of the Well, which had blood and a cross with chains and creepy ass music in the background. Mind you that that was only one out of 
the three places in the entire game that you would actually see blood despite the fact it was rated E for everyone games. This along with the zombie monster that moaned, screamed, rapid it, oh god, it wrapped its arms and legs around you and then started eating your head first. Oh, that traumatized me for life and will forever freak me out. Oh. But yeah, blood, dead body, makes sense. Pools of blood in random rooms, please stop. Moving on. Notes, they're everywhere. Day 5, journal entry, blah, blah, blah. Might as well document everything I do and stick the notes in the most obscure of places. Do you see where I'm getting at? Sticking a ton of notes everywhere for us to have to stop and read. Tisk tisk tisk. This happens in video games in general, and they tend to be in the form of, you found one out of 723 notes. I think two or three notes in the form of an Easter egg is okay, but unless it's some guy writing notes and leaving them everywhere, it's pretty unrealistic. But again, depending on the story, like say a sci-fi horror, computer log is describing how the monster slowly evolves will work. If it's not the typical, suddenly it develops a craving for human flesh. Come on. Solution? Slender Man. That is all. The door is locked. You know what that means. We need to go find the key. Happens all the time in the world of video games. I did it in my last lighthouse level. Never again will I hide keys all over the level. It should be a horror level, not a scavenger hunt. And trust me. It's not that hard to break a door down. Solution? Here's a crazy thought. How about replace the keys with hidden switch of some sort that opens up secret passageways? Ooh, go crazy. But this should be limited to like two in each level. Anything done in repetition horror-wise is a no-no. Remember that. Now, before you ask yourself, well, what the fuck, how am I supposed to make a horror level with everything being a cliche? Let's go over some good cliches that very few of us know how to take advantage of. Abandoned places. First thing that comes to mind is why the hell would anybody in their right mind want to spend the night inside an abandoned insane asylum? Wouldn't you? Of course not. You probably still believe in ghosts. Or, oh no, that's trespassing. You can get in trouble. Not an LVP, you won't. Why it works? Abandoned places were made for exploration, and who in the world doesn't like to explore? The curiosity, the thrill of being where you shouldn't be, the right to say that you made it through the abandoned chocolate factory of the dead and lived. Abandoned places can hold so many dark secrets. I mean, why was it abandoned in the first place? And more importantly, remote places, usually abandoned, are settings used to cut the player off from society and push them out of their comfort zone. Flickering lights. Like always, it's just faulty wiring. Or is it? Is this a sign, a symbol, a warning that a dark presence is nearby? And once the lights go out, you're left with just the light from your cell phone, which coincidentally doesn't have signal. You know you're screwed. Why it works? It's lighting. You need some sort of lighting in your level. And when the lights flicker, hundreds of different things can happen. The player expects nothing to happen. Oh, it's flickering lights. Happens all the time. And then, boom, you see the dark figure of a dead woman for a split second. Or you're in a completely different room filled with deformed people growing out of the walls. Wait, what? The music suddenly stops. Again, you know as soon as the music stops playing, you're done. Mr. Jack in the Box is your god now. Why it works? Anticipation. You know something's going to happen. Should you turn back? Should you get ready to run? Should you pray as you slowly open the next door? Suspension skyrockets. Anything could happen. Make it count. The music suddenly picks up. The violins start to play, but it's that creepy, screechy, high-pitched spider-leg violin kind of tune. The one that has you cringe as it picks up getting faster and louder. Why it works? 
Music in general will have a major impact on your level, whether it's dead silent the majority of the time or a constant churn of unsettling ambient stuck on repeat. Players will remember that one creepy song playing during your horror level. He was dead the whole time. Talk about plot twists. That one character who helps you out only to find out that he was a ghost the whole time. Why it works? It's a ghost story. Of course it's going to work. But what if you're the one who was dead all along? Blend it with mystery and don't make it obvious. Unsuspecting players will be mind blown. Just like any other genre, horror has many, many, many cliche after cliche after cliche. Some are good, they work well, and we love them. Some are downright terrible, we hate them, and they need to die because we know how the story will go. Your job is to identify the cliches that your level or story has and take it a step further. Think outside of the box. Once you know what the player expects to happen next, don't feed them it. Fire it up with a shot of unexpectedness. Something different, something bigger, something better, something deeper, something that they will always remember. In my next video, I'll be teaching you how to make creepy music for your horror level. Until then, this has been LBP Horror 101 with the Unknown One saying, Class is dismissed.